Hello and welcome to the Seraphim School of Fine Arts. At this time, we ask that you please silence all electronic devices and do not access them during this event. Please do not record or take photographs. If you should need to leave the theater during this event, you may exit quietly up the aisles and into the lobby. In case of an emergency, please follow the exit signs. Thank you for coming and enjoy the show. Hello, wow. and thank you for coming to my senior recital. This recital will include a full performance of Robert Schumann's Victor Lieber, a song cycle of 16 songs set to Heinrich Heine's lyric intermezzo from his Book of Songs by many talented musicians, both vocalists and instrumentalists. Thank you again for coming, and please enjoy my senior recital, which will start with a lecture. Before we delve deeper into Dichter Lieber and actually listen to it, I think we should talk about the composer Robert Schumann. Schumann was born in June of 1810 in the Kingdom of Saxony, which is now part of central Germany. Uh, at the age of six, Schumann's musical career had already begun. He was learning to play piano and he was composing his own music. At this time, he had gained influence from prolific composers at the time, such as Franz Schubert. Though he went to law school for a short time in 1828, Schumann had a love for music and continued his musical studies. It was around this time that Schumann gained a very important asset, renowned piano teacher Friedrich Wieck. Under his studies, Schumann had achieved an even higher skill with his piano as well as his song composition. Not only did he get to study under Friedrich Wieck, but he also met his daughter while studying under him, Clara Wieck. Clara was a piano prodigy of her own, who was already on her way to becoming a renowned pianist and performer. Schumann continued to study under Wieck and compose piano music. In 1831, however, Schumann would have a hand injury that would stop him, stop him short in his tracks from ever becoming a professional pianist. Following this hand injury, however, Schumann focused on composing and had a period in which he composed some of his most famous piano works, such as Papillons and Carnival. Schumann became engaged in 1834, but he actually loved another woman, Clara Wieck. Though Clara returned Schumann's sentiments, her father did not agree with the relationship and ordered Robert to stop seeing Clara. Schumann did not listen to Clara's father and in 1837 asked Friedrich again if he could marry, uh, marry his daughter. Friedrich did not agree with the relationship, but this time the couple succeeded. In 1840, Schumann circumvented Clara's father and went directly to the court to marry Clara. Clara and Robert Schumann married in 1840, during which Schumann's composing was undergoing a massive shift from his previous works. Instead of writing solely piano music, Schumann had shifted towards writing German Lieder or art songs, song cycles, and even orchestral works later in his career. 1840 in particular, however, the year he married Clara Wieck, Clara Schumann, was an especially important year for him. Robert Schumann composed Dichter Lieber, Liederkreis, Frau Lieber und Leben, all of, all of which are some of his most influential works, all of which he composed in the year 1840. The early 1840s would be Robert Schumann's peak as a composer. Many of his greatest chamber pieces, orchestral pieces, and song cycles were composed in the first five years of the 1840s. Following this peak, however, Schumann started to decline in both his composing skills, but more importantly, in his mental health. Robert had thought about and attempted suicide throughout the middle of his life. In 1854, he entered himself into what was considered then a lunatic asylum and subsequently attempted suicide. While he did not succeed, he would pass in the asylum he entered himself into. Schumann passed away from pneumonia in 1856. Robert Schumann was a very prolific composer and a very interesting person as well. His life had many joys and it also had many sorrows, something that he showcases masterfully within his 1840 song cycle, Dichter Lieber. Please enjoy the first half of Dichter Lieber and I please ask that you hold all applause until the end of the seventh song. Thank you. 
all enjoy the first half? Let's talk about the song cycle a little bit. Dichter Liebe, or A Poet's Love, is a German song cycle, which means it is a collection of art songs that all have an overarching theme that was originally set to 20 songs, but had to be cut down to 16 due to publishing reasons, all set to Heinrich Heine's Lyric Intermezzo from his incredibly influential book of songs. Just to think of how influential it is, about 3,000 German art songs have been set to this one book of songs. Um, it, Schumann uses these poems to tell the story of a lover and his joys with love, but more importantly, his sorrows that come with love as well. Dichter Liebe has a strong and emotional story to tell that is conveyed both by the melodic lines written for the singer, as well as the gripping story being told by the piano throughout the song cycle. The piano is arguably more important than the singer in many places and tells the story better than any words really could. At the time of composing Dichter Liebe, he had already composed several other song cycles, including one of his most influential along with Dichter Liebe, the previously mentioned Liederkreis. But then Dich Liederkreis is different from Dichter Liebe in a sense that within the song cycle of Liederkreis, the piano isn't as melodic as the one in Dichter Liebe. It follows a much more accompanimental task than the piano in Dichter Liebe, which shows off the story better. Within Dichter Liebe, the piano is an extension of the performer, not the voice singing and conveying many different emotions, or as the accompaniment leader Christ is just that. This is very important to Dichter Liebe, as many of the songs are made that much more intense and emotional because of the beautiful piano melodies being played alongside the performer. Later in the second half of the recital, a violinist and a trombonist will both be performing two pieces, or will be performing two pieces total, that I think will show that the reactions produced from Dichter Liebe are not solely on the singer and the text and the story that the singer is telling, but also in the powerful melodic lines that Schumann has written within the vocal and piano lines. Not only are they powerful in the sense that they are pleasing to, least to listen to, but they are powerful in the sense that they tell the story of Dichter Liebe without even having to have spoken a word. There are many factors that could have influenced Schumann to write Dichter Liebe in such a way. Schumann had an extensive piano background, as we talked about previously, which might have led him to write very, very robust piano, um, piano melodies underneath. Another key factor could be the music of other composers during his life. In 1823, another legendary composer, Franz Schubert, had composed a similar song cycle to Schumann's Dichter Liebe, Winterreis. This song cycle, a collection of 24 songs set to Wilhelm Müller's poetry, also experiments with the prospect of a voice within the piano telling the story being sung. Undoubtedly, Schumann was influenced by the work of Schubert and went on to combine his and Schubert's writing styles to create Dichter Liebe. Schumann had written instrumental music and was experimenting with writing German leader beginning in 1840 with the marriage of Clara Wieck. Even within the year 1840, though, you can see the transformation of Schumann's music through the more complemental piano, as we talked about previously in Liederkreis, versus the second character showcased in Dichter Liebe. I hope y'all can listen to the beautiful piano melodies within the second half of Dichter Liebe. And I ask, as similar to the first half, to hold all applause until this would be the 16th song, the very last song. Thank you.
Thank you. 